Well, uh, let me tell you, on behalf of the Foreign Office, how pleased I am uh, to welcome you all here, and how pleased I am to be at this session, because David and, and Sam Dawes had asked me um, some time ago to, to be here to speak tonight, and I said I had a job in New York and couldn't possibly uh, be here in London to do it. Um, and then Gordon Brown must have thought very much that he wanted me to open the meeting tonight. Uh, because I find myself here. Uh, and of course, for me, this is a particularly, in a sense, complete um, uh, the, the sort of emotional circle of my first few days as a Foreign Office Minister because I'm back amongst friends. Um, some like Dame Margaret Hansley, who I've uh, known for many, many years, and David Hane when he was uh, ambassador in New York, and others who I've known uh, both more recently as, as diplomats, but many of you who are here who I've known as fellow scholars and activists on UN uh, matters, and quite a few of you who I've known because you've given me hell as a poor UN official who failed to deliver on uh, whatever was the issue of the day. But um, uh, let me just say that I think those of us in this UN community, which uh, is an intergovernmental community, a non-governmental community, um, but which is united in just this you know, powerful idea uh, that the United Nations um, may seem a little old and, uh, to some, but that to all of us, uh, it's an idea which is as fresh and as important uh, as the day it began and has ever more to contribute uh, to the way our world is organized and works in an era of uh, globalized problems. Uh, for all of us bound together by that common idea, um, the UNA has been a critical support group. Uh, and I know that, and I say it about here, but certainly in our last rather difficult days for Kofi Annan and myself in New York, it was equally important uh, in the fight in America to preserve support uh, for the United Nations. And I must say, trust David Hane and Sam Dawes and the rest of the team here to have come up with something as clever as this massive handbook. Um, you know, it really is authoritative, complete, uh, is I think going to give all of us, whether we are scholars or activists, uh, a real sense uh, of uh, the history and depth uh, of research on pretty much every subject it, it, it covers. I'm just disappointed that Sam sent mine by mail to New York. Uh, so I'm undoubtedly, when I come back from New York at the end of next week with some clean shirts, going to have to kind of check my luggage in and pay, um, and pay extra because of this book ways uh, several kilos in its own right. Um, but let, let me just end it there. Again, a very, very warm welcome to all of you. I suppose I do have to add that as some of you will have noticed in my title as a Minister of the Foreign Office, I, um, I carry the, the term United Nations. Um, and I think that was enormously important to the Prime Minister, enormously important to David Miliband, and certainly extremely important to me. Uh, because I feel that there's a lot of unfinished business in terms of building a stronger multilateral system and reforming the United Nations. And I, uh, now I'm home, uh, look forward to working with all of you uh, on that common purpose. And let me just say, David apologizes for not being able to join us this evening, but sends his warmest regards to all of you for this meeting tonight. Thank you very much.
uh, this volume, and the two co-editors, Sam Dawes and Professor Tom Weiss are here, and they will be um, saying a bit at the end after we've had the contributions from the main panelists. Um, but the other reason for this is in fact to uh, look at the United Nations uh, in uh, its present state and looking forwards and uh, try and understand better how we can make it work better, which is obviously very necessary. And of course, the fact that uh, you mark here is a splendid signal that the new government within days of taking office is actually giving the United Nations a high profile and priority. And that's a massive encouragement to everyone here who in different ways contributes to the UN Association through that to the UN. Um, we will be, the three panelists are Professor Sir Adam Roberts from uh, Oxford, from Balliol, who's uh, focused a, a great deal on peace and security issues and has written a great deal about the UN. Uh, Nari Woods at the left hand end there, who is also a professor at Oxford of Global Governance and who is going to talk more about the economic uh, side of global governments and the IMF World Bank as well as the UN. And then Nick Thorne, who's a practitioner, poor fellow had the uh, misfortune to be my uh, budget councillor uh, 12 years ago, I think, which he seems to be thriving on, on it since. So, and he is the British ambassador to the United Nations in Geneva and will be talking, I think, a bit about the Geneva institutions, but in particular the not particularly brilliant start which the Human Rights Council has got off to. And so they are the three uh, panelists, and when they uh, spoke, there will be a period of about half an hour ago for questions uh, to the panelists. And uh, then uh, Sam and Professor Elise will, will talk uh, a little bit about the, this book. Just before we go to the panelists, I, I, I'd just like to make one or, one or two uh, points. The first, I think, is that this is um, uh, the UN is often thought to exist, to consist of little more than the Security Council. And if you read the press or watch television, listen to World Service Radio, you might think that there's precious little except the Security Council and its doings and its failures and some of its successes too, because it does have them. But what this handbook shows more clearly than you could possibly uh, have, have known before is the huge extent and multiplicity of the things that the UN does all over the world and not just in New York around that horseshoe shaped table in the Security Council. And that I think is a tremendously important reminder that the UN is about more than the Security Council. Then, the second thing is that I hope this book, uh, and meetings like this too, will begin to address one of the great weaknesses of the UN, which is that people don't understand it very well, they don't, uh, they don't grasp what it can be expected to do and what it cannot be expected to do. And they uh, therefore misunderstand it and often uh, that leads to uh, loss of confidence, loss of support, feeling that the organization is just not up to it. And I think that a book like this, of course, is mainly addressed to an academic audience, to academic students and so on, but it could have a real multiplier effect in getting a better understanding and knowledge of the UN. And then thirdly, I hope that it will act as an antidote to these wild mood swings which afflict the United Nations, whereby when it does something good, everybody immediately assumes that it can do anything. And then when something goes wrong, they immediately assume that it can't do anything at all, it can do nothing. These mood swings are very damaging and they are very misleading because as sure as day follows night, as sure as rain follows sun, 95% of what the UN does is going on every day around the world completely unaffected by the latest catastrophe or setback or problem. And that's what people don't understand, but if you read this book, I know a bit demanding, but if you read this book, you will understand it, because you will see just how many things do go on, and which are not subject to the 
in somewhat complex political games that people play in New York. Well, that's quite enough for me. I'll now uh, uh, ask each of the panelists to give us a brief presentation of the themes that they've chosen, starting with Adam Rock.